Another day, another dispensary. Hi, I'm Leah and welcome to Hide and Seek. And welcome to episode two in the Let's Get a Tag In Before Work series. Today we're doing the It's Not Fall tag, which actually I probably should call the It's Not Winter tag because it's already clicked over to it summer here but hey I liked the questions so let's get started. Question one, where are you from? I am from Australia and remote Australia at that. I live a long way from the city and a long way from the beach and so that's where I'm coming to you from today. Question two, a book by an author from your country. Now Australian authors are doing some amazing things at the moment from everybody's booktube darling Marcus Zusak's Book Thief to Leanne Moriarty's Little Big Lies which has just been optioned for season two for the television series. Hannah Kent with Burial Rights and The Good People. Australian authors are doing some amazing things and on this channel I really would like to start to highlight some other Australian authors doing some other really good works. Question three. A classic children's book from your country. Now I'm going to be nostalgic here and talk about Mae Gibbs, Snugglepot and Cuddle Pie, a series I loved as a child. I'm going to add a caveat. Whilst the artwork and the imagery is beautiful, looking at it through the filter of the 21st century, the political correctness and the representation is perhaps not appropriate. Would I reread it? Probably not. Would I give it to my child to read? Probably not. And so in that aspect, I'm just going to put it in a time capsule, look back on it fondly, but also look forward to how far Australia has come in that time. The imagery is beautiful, but perhaps the message is not so great. Question four. A book from your country you were forced to read at school. Now, back in the dark ages when I was at school, the Australian education system was very much based on the British education system. So my reading lists were filled with Jane Austen, William Shakespeare, Thomas Hardy, William Golding, very much those British educational literature. So there weren't too many Australian books on the list. I do remember reading The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith, Thomas Keneally, which was shortlisted for the Man Booker in 1972. I read it decades later. but. It was a great book and one I'd actually really like to reread and I'm thinking of rereading more of Keneally's work in 2018. Question 5. A book about something that frustrates you about your country. Now I'm going to talk about here Kathy Lett and Puberty Blues and I remember reading this as a teenager having to hide it from my mother because oh my god it was so scandalous. Reading it in 2017, I'm sure it's completely harmless and absolutely not scandalous, but way back in the dark ages, it was pretty hot stuff. But what frustrates me about that book is the idea that everyone in Australia lives by the beach. Now where I am now, the beach is about 700 kilometers to the east of me, and I am so far from the beach. I love the beach, but I don't live anywhere near it at all. So that misconception that not only people from other countries but many Australians as well hold that we all live close to the beach is such a fallacy and so frustrating. Question six, a book with weather similar to your hometown. Now this is actually really easy to answer and that is The Dry by Jane Harper. Now I did have a few issues with this book. I liked it. I didn't love it. But what I did love was how Jane Harper represented the weather almost as its own character, that relentless, hot, dry weather that's a personality of its own. I felt so similar to where I live. We generally click around 45 to 47 degrees Celsius in summer. In fact, January this year we got one day where we got to 49.8 and it was oh, abominable. We also get down to about minus 10, minus 12 overnight in winter so we have that huge range of weather temperatures. But the dry definitely represented my hometown. Question 7. A book about a cultural celebration you feel as though you have missed out on. Now I'm really lucky I've travelled a lot. I've had Hogmanay in Edinburgh, I've had St Patrick's Day in Dublin, Easter in the Vatican, White Christmas in Canada. I've traveled a lot and experienced a lot. I haven't had a 4th of July in America. I would 
would like to get there one day but not high on my priority list be to America just not in July but the one festival I think I would really love to experience and an area I haven't traveled far at all is anywhere through Asia and I've always had a soft spot for the cherry blossom festival so I'd very much like to experience the cherry blossom festival in Japan one day so Sean the book maniac if you have a recommendation on a book set in Japan about the cherry blossom festival or any book set in Japan send it my way I'd love it question eight a book originally written in your first language now this question is not applicable to me English is my first language Italian my second as my mum's Italian so most Australian books are written in English and I can experience and enjoy them in their original iteration question nine a book about a cultural celebration you love now I'm going to go with something uniquely Australian and New Zealand and that's Anzac Day where we remember our fallen soldiers and it's not that I glorify war or even have any great affiliation with the armed forces at all but what it represents was the first time Australia stood on the world sphere and said yes we are modern we are a country we are here to serve on the world sphere and both Australia and New Zealand were both very small countries at that time and we stood up and a book that represents that was again another book I read at school I forgot for that A Fortunate Life by A.B. Facey a classic Australian story of coming of age with the parallels of coming of age of the main character and coming of age of the country and it's a great Australian classic that perhaps isn't as widely read today as it should be Ken, something you wish the rest of the world knew about your country I wish the rest of the world knew how big Australia was yet how sparsely populated it was we are huge we have almost the same landmass as North America proper like the United States of America yet we have only three people per square kilometer most of those are situated on the coast however people like me do live inland so three people per square kilometre when you compare it to say United Kingdom who has 270 people per square kilometre and India who has almost 450 people per square kilometre. So we are a big country yet very sparsely populated. So I wish people would know how big we are yet simultaneously how small we are. So there is my it's not fall, it's not winter tag. Thanks for watching.